Yes, I teach at three colleges right now. I teach at Hudson Community College, Brookdale Community College, and New Jersey City University. So after once we're said and done, if you need any help getting into college, I don't care what college it is across the country, I can help you. All right, so that's one. Two, I don't know who's going on like that. I don't need to go nowhere. But anyway, right? <laughs> Two, I did have this presentation about hair, barbershop, had music, all this great stuff, but I'm not going to be able to, I don't have enough time for that. I only have 20 minutes. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna drop some empowerment. I'm gonna let you know the importance of leadership, entrepreneurship, and also the importance of education. Is that cool with you? Yeah. All right, cool. So my name is, again, Lenny Williams. I have a bachelor's degree in business management, an MBA in marketing, a social media certificate, post-education certificate from NYU. Um, I'm going to be going back to school for my PhD in urban education. And I always tell you to say this, not because I'm trying to brag or be some big time guy. I did all that before the age of 30. Right, I became a professor at the age of 27. I'm the only African-American professor in every single school I worked at in, within that division of business. Right, typically, African-American professors only teach African-American studies, um, history, maybe a little bit of business here and there, but you don't really see African-American males within my position. So I'm definitely happy to be here to share some of the knowledge of how to get there. Now, I told you the good stuff, the political stuff, now I'm gonna tell you the bad stuff and the real stuff. Right? I had a 1.9 GPA my freshman year in high school. I'm gonna say that again. Right? I told you all that great stuff, but I had a 1.9 GPA my freshman year in high school. My junior year in high school, by the time I got to my junior year, I scored under a 700 math and verbal combined in the SAT. So that's terrible. Don't worry, you can laugh, it's fine. <laughs> So we'll wait. We'll wait. You don't gotta worry about it. We'll wait. See, this is my thing. I'm glad you did that. I'm real glad you did that. Because when I was in high school, I had a 1.9 GPA. I had under 700 SAT. And the only thing I ever won in high school was class clown. And I thought that was the way to be because all the girls like the clowns. They like the guys that's funny. And see, if you like the guys that's funny, fight or play sport. That's all I know was fresh. That's all I thought about. I'm like, well, I gotta be fresh. I gotta play sports. I gotta be funny. I gotta talk when the teacher's talking. When we got presenters come in, I gotta laugh when the presenter come in. I gotta talk when the presenter comes in because I wanna mask some of the things that's going on with me. And this is what happens. We start masking things that's going on with us. We start masking things. And what happens is when you start masking things, no matter how successful you become, you lose, you lose the quality of being authentic. I'm talking about this for a reason. I had this whole presentation up, but I got to like talk about this because it's on my heart. You lose the whole thing about being authentic. So there's some people out there, you ever hear this term? Everybody heard this. Man, I'm trying to do good so I can get off the hood. You heard that, right? Everybody heard that, right? You heard that, you heard that, you heard that, heard that. Me too, I hear it all the time. Why are we saying that? We're being conditioned. So back to all the, we talked about the art, the hair, the, the products. Why your hair gotta be a certain way? Because we're being conditioned, but sometimes we condition ourselves. Sometimes we put ourselves down. There's so many people out here that's our skin color that's doing the things that we want to be done or doing the things that we want to be at and we don't even respect them or we don't even read about them. We only read about the history because we gotta read about it in class, but there's some black hist historians right now in our faces, i.e. Bree Newsom. Who's Bree Newsom? <coughs> Nobody knows. Bree Newsom is the young lady that climbed the flag flagpole and pulled down the Confederate flag in South Carolina. Something that your ancestors fought for, and she remembered that, and climbed that pole and had courage to climb that pole and become a historian. So you can become a historian now. Or you can forget how to be authentic. That's the problem. A lot of us don't want to be authentic. And that's how I'm in high school. I don't want to be authentic. I want to be cool with everybody else. I want to be down with everybody else. I want to do what everybody else is doing. But I didn't want to do nothing that was different. I didn't want to put myself in a certain space. And that's what happens with a lot of us. We don't want to put ourselves in a certain space. Because guess what happens when you put yourself in a certain space? You say you want to get out the hood, 
That's step one. Then you put yourself in a certain space and you forget how authentic you are. And you forget your people. You ever see those people that made it from Newark or made it from your area that will not come back here? Not one time? Because they forgot to be authentic. And that happened way back when they was acting a certain way in school. That happened way back then. When they was putting on this mask, they was putting on a facade, that's what I call it, a facade. When everybody come in, you gotta act tough. When everybody come in, you gotta laugh. When the teacher say read, I don't wanna read. It's a facade, because everybody wants to be successful. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. So if everyone wants to be successful, why are we putting on this facade? Why are we not being authentic with ourselves? So I need you to stop being authentic with ourselves. I'm not talking about just making your hair natural. I'm, saying, I'm not just talking about working out and being a vegan. I'm talking about being authentic within your soul. Right? I'm talking about being authentic within your soul. I'm talking about every day you live with not yourself, but your community. So I want you to become successful here, leave here, go out there, and come back and put your hand back to help others. That's why I'm here today. So I just want to start with that for a reason. Because I'm in meetings all the time, just like today, with some of my other color colleagues. And they go, you're rushing for our meeting. Where are you going? I'm like, well, I'm going to Newark. Oh, you're going there? Whoa. Take <laughs> Are you gonna be okay? <laughs> uh, drive your other car, not the main car. Right? You didn't know that car. You're going to the other car. Right? You don't want to get in trouble out here. Like I read some things about that place, but I know that there's people that are stars here. I know that you have a strong, you have a harder struggle than anybody that's at the top already. You're running skills right now that's gonna make you successful. The same cats that's on the corner right now are the same cats, hypothetically speaking, that's in Congress. It's the same cats when you go for a job that stop you from getting a job. I'm not talking about the cats that you see on the block. I'm talking about just cats on the block that's in organizations that don't want you to succeed. So what I'm telling you is to remain authentic within yourself. What I'm telling you is that there's teachers here that want to help you, you stand behind that teacher and you have their back. I'm telling you, once you finish that, you're going to go on, you're going to do great things, and I need you to come back and help people before you, and help the young ones before you. And remember, there's somebody here that's watching you that don't even really graduate high school, and they're watching you. So I need you to continue to be authentic, because they're watching you, now that's another young one that's coming up. And that's another young one that's coming up. See, as black people, all we think about is Black Lives Matter and marching in Washington, D.C. That's great. I love it. But nobody talks about the micro. Nobody talks about what's going on in their own hood, what's going on in their own block. These same people going back to the same block, and lot of people shoot themselves not even sticking up for it, because they're not being authentic. I need you to start being authentic. When people come in here, I want you to show some respect. When people come in here, I want you to say good morning. When people come in here, I want you to shake their hand. I want you to look them in their eyes. I want you to have confidence and believe that you're going to be successful. You guys still with me? Yeah. All right, cool. All right? So, I have about 15 more minutes. Pay attention to the time. I got you. I can talk all day about here, and I'm just going to bring it back to that. If you know, African Americans, one of their first businesses, was a barbershop, right? Free men, they started a barbershop back in the 19th century. They took full advantage. So think about that. They started a barbershop before the emancipation. They started a barbershop when they were still slaves. So why is it a question, or why is it a problem that our race, who we are, are not starting businesses? Not today. We have small business incubators. We have SBDC. You can go to college. You can go to school for entrepreneurship. People are not stopping you. Why are we stopping ourselves? Because we create this border. So I already talked about authenticity. Now I want to talk about this border that we're creating. Right, we're creating a border that's stopping us from being successful. We're creating this border. We're thinking that if you don't play sports, if you don't sing, if you're not in a club, if you're not wild like Cardi B, <laughs> right? if you're not, if you're not in the videos, right? if you're not in the videos, if you're not catching the football, you're corny. That's corny. That's whack. And the other job besides that is whack. I don't want to do it. But really, that's not whack. Because guess what? Those spaces don't make changes for you. The spaces that make change for you is Congress, council, professors, educators, doctors, nurses, lawyers, judges. But we're too afraid to get there because it's a corny route to get there. But it's not really a corny route. We're just not used to it. We don't have enough people. When I told you, you can come back down to tell us that we can get there. I'm telling you how to 1.9 GPA. Right? I'm telling you that I failed the whole entire remedial test in college. That's the first test you take. I felt math, reading, and writing. I felt writing so low. I felt that test so low, they said I needed ESL English. 
I was born in America. Okay. I went in there. I went in there with my 